Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Stress and Pain Relief Podcast. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. Now, this is a double recording, both for reducing stress and reducing the physical sensations of chronic pain. Well, plus the physical sensations of stress as well. And the reason why I do both at the same time is because the same techniques work for reducing both. So I decided to combine into one podcast and I will be sharing these podcast episodes on my other popular podcasts that will benefit or that may benefit if you choose to listen, of course. Right. <coughs> now, I'm going to do something that's it's almost the opposite of what you're going to want to do. But bear with me. Play along, humor me, whatever. Because this is something I've done before, but it's not the first time. And when it comes to things like chronic pain and stress, the you get to the point, you can get to the point where you feel that you really hate it. You really, really hate it. And that's the natural, it's natural to feel that way. So I'm not judging it. Um, it's natural, it's the most natural thing in the world to hate something that you feel as though it's causing you to suffer. Almost like it's doing something to you when there is no something else doing something to you. It is you, you know. It's not an outside force. It's not so it's not another person doing something to you. Um, this is your body and your mind. So is the natural way to think about it is I hate this uh, the stress or I hate the pain. And I've been in those situations many times. Um, it's almost I remember in the past having a toothache and punching myself in the face. I don't do that anymore. I was a lot younger then, but almost like, well, that's not going to cure anything. That's not going to do any help. But having that frustration of just, uh, you know. Um, but I was a lot, as I said, I was a kid and it didn't help. But there is that real hatred towards the pain. And then, you know, with anxiety, stress, there's there's a definitely a resentment kicks in. And that's natural as well. However, natural doesn't necessarily mean useful. You know, it's natural to hold a grudge against somebody that has caused you harm in your life. It's the most natural thing in the world. It's the least helpful thing. It's not useful, not helpful, and it's poisonous. So you end up hurting yourself. The longer you keep the grudge, the more pain you cause yourself. But it's natural to hold the grudge. So, you know, that's the point which sometimes people miss out when they try and tell you, oh, get rid of the grudge, don't hold the grudge. Uh, forgive the person and all that stuff but they don't acknowledge the fact that it's really normal and natural the most natural thing in the world is to hold a grudge and to have that hatred towards that person who has caused you suffering 
It's natural, but it's not helpful or healthy. So I think being told and hearing it's natural can be useful so that you're you're making changes you're deciding to make a change but you're not doing it based on guilt based on being told that you're doing something wrong that you're doing something abnormal you know that you're you're holding a grudge and there's something wrong with you for holding that grudge or you're hating the chronic pain when you shouldn't hate it you know I'm not going to say that to you because it's a lie. There's nothing more natural than feeling resentful towards uh, feelings of stress, anxiety, chronic pain, any kind of physical or emotional suffering is horrible. It's just, it's the worst. It's horrible. So it's natural to feel resentful towards those feelings. But it's not healthy. Um, it can be helpful to the point if it gets you doing something. So if you, if it gets you making changes, because... It's, there's a chance someone listening to this recording wouldn't be listening to it unless they had either chronic pain or stress um, due to the title of the recording and the podcast. So your suffering has led you to seeking help and I hope that you've seeked help elsewhere as well. Get professional help see a doctor and all that stuff um, and I know that often listening to hypnosis recordings may be you know almost the last option it feels you know you might have gone through lots of different avenues along the way but my suggestion is never ever give up never there's always going to be something that's useful to you that can help and it may blow your mind just how easily you can reduce your pain or your stress if you find the right technique or the right process. Maybe it's even just finding the right mindset where you feel comfortable and you can start to explore the the reality that your brain is amazing and you're capable with your imagination of doing hugely wonderful things and making changes that would almost seem impossible from the outside. And we're always making changes. In fact, we're always changing anyway, you know, uh, organically we're always changing uh, brain cells die uh, brain cells grow different connections change uh, you know they say that our liver completely regenerates every seven years or something like that you know it's, it's, it's a lot going on that we're not aware of and we don't need to be aware of it you know you can only you can only make changes where you can make changes. And this is one of those things that you can make changes in by focusing. And there's lots, there's millions of different ways to get there. These recordings will just give you perhaps one way each recording. A potential way. How useful depends on, I guess your circumstances and it may be more useful the second time you listen but you get a glimpse at the very least you get a glimpse of comfort and the changes that can occur physically and you also start to realize really really 
get in contact with how powerful the connection is between your mind and your body, what you think and how you feel. Now, we all know this, really, you know, even if it's not from a biological perspective, maybe not, I'm not a biology person, I don't know much about anatomy, really, a little bit, but we know, really, we do know inside, I believe, that how we feel is affected by how we think. And then how we think is affected by how we feel. So it's, you know, it's an ongoing thing. But we can change the way that we think, which changes the way we feel. So I'm going to ask you to do something which is completely against, uh, <laughs> not nature, it's not illegal, but it goes against our natural way of doing things. And you may feel uncomfortable with doing it to start with. But humor me. So some people might be, well, get, they might even get angry at the idea of it. Um, and that's up to you if you choose. Because don't forget, you're choosing to feel angry if you feel angry. It's a choice. Um, hopefully, you know, it won't be having tantrums and rolling on the floor, punching the floor. <laughs> having a tantrum because things aren't exactly how you want them to be. Because then you'd be a toddler. So this is doing something that's completely against what you would naturally do. But notice how it feels when you do it. There can almost be a confusion in your mind because it's the opposite to perhaps what you would do normally. And don't worry, it's not really weird. I'm building it up and you're probably thinking um, it's going to be a very strange thing. But it's not. It's, you know, I mean, for example, if someone has a real fear of wetting themselves when they've got their clothes on, wetting themselves in public, and they've never done it, it's never happened, but they've got this phobia of it happening, real big fear, then one thing would be to get that person to stand in the bath and urinate while they've got their clothes on. Drink lots of water first and then urinate. Now that might seem like it's the last thing in the world they would ever want to do. But first of all, they're not doing it in public. But once they've done it, they realize that they're in control of it because you almost would have to force yourself to do it. It's not a natural thing. And secondly, once you've done it, you realize it's not that much of a big deal, really. And that fear changes. The way you think about it changes. Now, I've never asked anyone to do that. and I've never, I've, I'm, I might do a recording on that one day. Um, I've never met anyone that had that fear. But there are people out there that would be scared of that. When, you know, it's one of those fears that, like most fears, fears are something that's probably never going to happen. So, this is not quite, not quite in that extreme. There's nothing physical to do. It's just saying something out loud. Okay, so if you're ready, what we're going to do is close your eyes, if your eyes are not already closed. <sighs> and just focus on your breathing. You're not trying to change your breathing. Just allow your breathing to be exactly how it is. 
There's no counting of the breath. There's no nothing. It's just being aware of it. Noticing if you're feeling more relaxed now than you were before you press the play button. Now, if you listen to me regularly, just hearing my voice will almost be a relaxation trigger to calm, relax your mind and your body. Generally, your body starts to relax naturally. Your mind starts to slow down. And your mind's still active. It's just, it calms itself and those things that you were thinking about before lose, they lose the energy. The energy's almost just taken out. And sometimes it can be almost like you've separated the batteries. So your mind has not got that full energy, but these you know, these emergency lights are on, you know, the emergency generator. So everything's calm. And I'd like you to focus on a part of your body where either there's physical dis where there's physical discomfort, whether for stress or for the other, and just focus on one part. That's it. Just one part of your body where you're feeling that. So for me, um, it would be my lower back. I have uh, a lot of problems with my lower back, and it's an ongoing daily adventure <laughs> so I'm going to focus on my lower back the left side you can focus on whatever part of your body you feel physical discomfort it may be in your head it may even be an emotional feeling that you don't necessarily feel physically although if you searched your body there's a likelihood you would feel it in your body as well But it's a case of focusing on that feeling, whether it's emotional or physical. And what we're going to do out loud, we're going to say, we're going to focus the words towards that feeling. Okay? That feeling of what we perhaps would call discomfort. You've probably got better words for it, but you know, I suppose let's use that word for now. That feeling, that physical sensation. We're going to focus these words and you can repeat after me. Thank you for all that you do. Again, thank you for all that you do for me. One more time, focusing on that part of your body or that physical sensation or emotional sensation. Thank you for everything you do for me. Now, I told you it's a bit of a weird sentence to say. 
it's less weird for me because I knew what I was going to say and as I said I've done this before so I can only really imagine what it's like to sort of be listening for the first time and if you've got feelings that are coming up almost in defense you know maybe angry feelings or defensive feelings focus on those feelings now and say the same words thank you for all that you do saying it three times like before thank you for all that you do for me thank you for all that you do I just focused on the back for all six sentences because there's nothing really coming up uh, as a in opposition again because I knew what I was going to be doing and I was prepared. So I'd like to focus on that part again and just notice how you're feeling. Something that I've noticed from right in this moment is that my lower back almost feels a little bit itchy inside, not on the skin, but not itchy enough to want to scratch it, but just that very slight feeling of itchiness inside that particular area and it's a little bit like the sensation you have underneath a scab you know when you've damaged a part of your body maybe it's been a cut or a scrape the scab grows over and then a few days later there's an itchiness underneath which just means that it's healing basically and you don't need to scratch it and you also don't really want to because you don't want to open the scab up again but it's there but it's not annoying but it's noticeable that's what I'm feeling now in my lower back the part that I was focusing on I'm going to change my focus because, and maybe you wish to too, because I've noticed that there's, I'm feeling a degree of stress on my forehead and my eyes. And I was before, but I wanted to focus on my lower back because um, it was very uncomfortable. Now, it's just almost like the volume is being turned down so I can almost not even hear it like it's been soundproofed or something so I'm going to focus on the stress or the tension it's more tension than stress the tension in my eyes and my forehead and I get I get tension due more to do with my eyesight so at the moment I've got a light, a bright light shining in, the, in my face um, and sometimes I get a bit of, my eyesight's a bit, you know, causes problems. So I'm not being reading or, you know, stuff like that, which is fine. 
it causes a little bit of tension and I'm going to focus on that now. We're going to do the same sentence. But maybe you might want to focus on a different part of your body. Perhaps you want to continue focusing on the same part. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to focus on my forehead and my eyes. That way I can test it in the moment. So again, repeat in the same sentence three times. Thank you for all that you do for me. felt a little bit almost as if it was, you know, a bag of air that was deflating just really slowly and gently. Because sometimes things like chronic pain and stress can be like little babies. They they want your attention, but they don't want really anything else. They don't need anything else. They just perhaps want to be acknowledged or noticed. So maybe, you know, the toddler, the little baby will be crying. And you go over to the baby's cot. Sometimes just seeing you is enough. You just close your eyes and go back to sleep. Sometimes you need to pick them up and cuddle them, maybe rock, rock them, or maybe sing to them even. And then you fall back asleep. I think the that analogy is quite good in the sense of how we not separated from the feelings we have to acknowledge that we are part of those feelings part of us the pleasant feelings as well as anything else it's all just part of us Sometimes what you may notice uh, is you may become aware of other feelings in your body that maybe may need attention. So for me, my left eye, a bit of a pain in my left eye. I've been having this on and off for a few weeks. And it's more eye strain that I need to get to the opticians and get some, get my eyes tested and get some new glasses probably. Um, but as I focus on that, I'm going to do, say the sentence again three times. So maybe you like to do that again. Maybe you can find another part of your body. Maybe the same part if you choose. Just focus in on the part where you'd like to release and reduce whatever physical sensations you're experiencing. 
So of course you can focus on an emotional feeling. Repeat the words again three times. Thank you for all that you do for me. It's almost, it's almost magical really, my left eye, that feeling, that sensation's gone completely. I think one of the main reasons for the changes being so easy Because when you're saying thank you for all that you do for me, that part of your body, that feeling, that sensation, knows that it's not being attacked. It doesn't have to defend itself. And kindness, kind words don't need a defense, which means the intention behind the words and the intention behind listening to this recording is to reduce those problematic sensations so that you feel more comfortable, calmer, more relaxed. But that intention is always there. Adding that energy to those positive words, words of healing, open up your mind, to allow changes to occur. very peaceful way. can listen to this recording as many times as you choose to maybe gain the most benefit from it. It's also a technique that you can use in your own time whenever you choose to. to feel more of those comfortable 
relaxed feelings. You feel more comfort. And to increase your feeling of well-being and happiness. And also, you start to really get a sense of that appreciation that you can have for yourself. You start to realize more and more how amazing you are. How unique you are. And how worthwhile you are. And now, as you allow all of this to sink in, all of your ideas, all of your positive feelings to sink in to every atom of your body, to sink in to your mind, to become part of your brain, creating new neural networks in your mind and brain so that you future more easily gain access to these positive feelings, which may almost act automatically to give you physical and emotional relief. brings us to the end of this recording. I hope you're listening with music, a version of music, then just, you know, you'll be going on for another up to two hours with music, then you can just relax deeply, and if you choose, you could fall asleep if you want to. Take care, I will be back again soon with another recording. And remember to be kind to yourself, because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.